important for actors to have mentors in the industry or people that they perhaps look up to or can work with on a consistent basis that I suppose when, you know, as actors, we, we do, we all get into these dark times or perhaps when you're not working and you're going through struggles, it's a journey. It's like this. So do you think yeah. it's important for actors to have mentors or someone they can look up to or talk to? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent for sure. I've been so, so lucky that I've, I've been surrounded by older actors who've been there and done it. And my thing with life is I've always had a thing. I've, I've never wanted to, to repeat any mistakes that someone has ended up going through themselves. Mm. So if I can learn from them and not make any, well, similar mistakes that I'm doing well in life, then I don't have to go through life lessons that I don't have to go through. Sure. Know? Yeah. I know it's character building or whatever, but no one wants to fall over consistently. In our game, you're going to fall over all the time anyway. So mm. if you can limit the amount of times you're going to fall, then even better. Mm. Or if an older actor can give you a, um, some wisdom. Like we were talking about auditions, for example. Yeah. If someone can tell you, actually, get out of your head. Stop trying to pe get people to like you in a room. Like just mm. concentrate on doing your work. That is it. At the end of the day, they're just going to book you for your work and your job because you're efficient and you're good at your job. So just concentrate on that. So I do, I do, I do think so, 100%. And mm. they, they just bring you back down to earth and they make sure that you have an aim and a target in life. Mm. You know? it's, it's great to be inspired as well. It's so nice to go on set and be inspired by other actors who really know what they're doing. Mm. And you can ask them if they're decent, they'll, they'll give you the time of day. Mm. You can ask them questions and they can help you. Mm. And that's really cool. Yeah, Not everyone does that though, but you'd be surprised. There's a lot of actors out there who do want to pass on knowledge. Yeah. And that's, and that's really nice. That's really nice. Yeah, that's cool. That's very cool. Uh, what is your biggest fear as an actor? And how have you worked to overcome it? Or are you still overcoming it? Or does it change depending on where you are? In your career? Yeah. Um, biggest fear, maybe falling out of love with it. Maybe a little Ooh, bit. Okay. I think that would be maybe one. That'd be quite sad. Yeah. But I do, I do know that people have just went like, it's not for me anymore. But if that did happen, I would love to have some sort of a thing where I'd maybe do another aspect or directing or mm. you know, whatever. But I think that'd be quite sad of falling out with it. Because again, you, that's you lo losing your aim. You're on that. You're in your ship, your your voyage, and then you're like, "Oh, God, man, where's the map?" Ah, mm, that's heavy. That's heavy. <laughs> yeah, but there's so yeah. many people. I'm sure you know, and I, I definitely know that they are just bob bobbing around in the sea. They just don't have anywhere to go. That must mm. be terrifying. Maybe some people like that. They just just live life, the the easiness of life. But for me, that'd be quite scary. I think. Yeah, I reckon for me too. What sets you apart? So if you could attribute your success to one thing. I know this is a hard question, but what, what would um, it be? What do you think? Uh, hard work. Mm. I just work really, really, really hard. Yeah. I, work, I think if you work really hard and you just try and be a good human and you help people out, and hopefully if you help them out, then later on in life, they'll help you. Mm. you know, help each other up the ladder hard work yeah yeah, yeah. that's it. Hard, hard work that's yeah that's and just work. it's about it's about doing it so many people that talk you know you actually need you need, you need to do it yeah you got to put your ten thousand hours in that's i, I don't even know how many more <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be so annoyed if i done ten thousand i'd be like oh my god i feel as if i don't know anything I'd be like, oh. <laughs> I was like, I thought I'd know more. Yeah. I'd be like the same standard as a doctor. I'm like, ah. <laughs> God. Uh, what advice do you have for actors that are coming into the industry, no matter what age? Because I sometimes make the mistake of saying young actors, and I don't want it to be young yeah. actors. I want it to be actors in general who are trying to get a foot in the door. What would you say? Well, if you're just starting out, then you have to do a class of some yeah. kind. You have to do a class, you have to be surrounded by people who are after the same thing as you. Um, you have to be more involved with that, that, that world. Um, 
And if you're starting out and you do like it and you're doing classes, I would maybe recommend doing short films and do them for free. Just make sure that you get material, lots and lots of material. Um, and then from that, you can take little scenes that you think are good and then you can present it to an agent or some sort of manager. And then from there, you'll probably, that's one step closer to becoming an actor. Yeah. So have all your things in place so that you can get an agent and then get in the room. Because yeah. that's the goal, right? To get in the room. Yeah, totally. I don't think the room is as big as a thing. Like I do my bit, I've booked all my jobs in the last two and a half years from self tapes. Mm. And I prefer that. Well, now get... that's going to be the thing, isn't it? Anyway, you're not going to really, really be in a room. Totally. That's, I love that. I love it too. <laughs> Great. Because then you get to, like, you, you've got an accent. Where, where are you from? Oh, where do you think I'm from? I was going to say South Africa. Yes, you're right. Wait, wait, right. Well, yeah. So then you can do, if you were going up for a part, you could do an English accent and then people just think you're from England. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And they just, and then you get the part and they're like, oh my God, oh, you're not from England. No, it's you're like, well, it's a character. Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> but little things where you can just present the character and they go, oh my God, that's the person we're after. That's yeah. exactly what we want. And then sometimes when you go in the room, you present yourself in a way that they go, actually, you're not what we're after. And mm. a lot of the times, I don't, I don't know why, but I'm starting to get a lot of crazy parts coming in, like debt collectors <laughs> and all that. So, and I don't give off that vibe, you know, as just like a... a just a norm, normal mark, I don't give that off, you know, like flowery cups and t-shirts, you know, that's definitely not gonna give over that vibe. But when I self-tape, I can change that up and then yeah, I can yeah. look menacing, you know, so. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you can, well self-tapes, yeah, you can you can be whoever you wanna be and then there's, there's, no, there's far less pressure, far less pressure. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Just in terms of that whole self-tape auditioning thing, just out of interest, were you, because you know they say that some actors are skilled auditioners. It's a skill. It's a, it's a different skill to being on set and actually doing the job. Um, were you, are, are you a good auditioner? Have, or has that developed? Like how well, many auditions have you done in your acting career? God, man, so many now. Okay. I, think about it. I mean, when there's so many no's that you're, yeah. you're gonna have. I'm gonna get, but as long as those no's are maybes, then that's okay. If um, um, I, you've got a lot of maybes, then you're doing well. That's good. Um, oh, maybe 300, maybe. Like, oh, wow. So, so, yeah, by now you're like, I can do it, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I mean, I still get nervous. Everyone still gets nervous. Yeah, yeah. No? But the main thing is, it's about using that. Like, most of the time, maybe I've just been extremely lucky, but I think most of the time you can use your nerves as fuel. So if you are nervous and your heart is racing and you're doing a part where you've been interviewed uh, by a police officer, then that's amazing because yeah. yeah, because your character's heart's racing. So you're like, oh my God, this is so good for this. I just need to remember my lines. Yeah. As I want to do, and just be like embrace the fear of it and then try and hide it and then and let it come out and that's it. Mm. And then it's good work. Mm. So a lot of people are like, oh my God, stop being nervous, stop being nervous. Oh my God, I'm, I'm nervous. I'll be like, check it. I call it checking in with yourself. You check in, you're like, right, okay, where am I at right now? Where am I? I'm really nervous. I'm a bit frustrated. Oh my God, that person's not even looking at me. Maybe that really pisses me off and annoys me. It's like, I've came in here. It's taken an hour and a half to get here for this meeting. You're not even looking at me. Can I use this creatively? Yeah. And most mm. of the time, yeah, I can. And then yeah. it's like what we were talking about earlier on, it's about being truthful in the mm. moment. And they're and giving I, you inspiration and you're going, I'm going to take that inspiration, that negative, I'm going to make it pos positive and I'm going to put it into the character and into the script. Yeah, and I, I suppose the more you do it and the more you start to understand yourself as, as a person, as a human, mm -hmm. you start to understand your own characteristics and your own things that make you you, you'll... You, you need to learn to control that as well. It's about controlling the nerves. It's being able to use them when you need to use them, but it's also being able to not let them overtake oh, well. you. Yeah. yeah, because then yeah. the lines go and then, then other shit happens and then you're screwed, basically. Sure. <laughs> yeah. and that, and that, that's when it comes into like technique. 
yeah. technique. Yeah, exactly. I do it loads of time. So when you do have a physical addition and someone is beside you who's going up to the same part, you might be the kind of person that can chat to that individual. Mm. I talk about the script where I'm the person where I've got my headphones on and I just want to concentrate on the work that I'm going to do in the room. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then after I'll be like, hey, how's things? How yeah. are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And that always gets me. Sometimes you'll get some actors who'll be like, sorry, mate, I'm just going to concentrate. We'll catch up after if you're as a friend. Sometimes you bump into your friends. Mm. Right, well, this is the thing. You think they're your friends. And then you're like, here, just give me a, a minute or whatever. I just need to chill. Most of the time, like, totally cool. Mm. Good luck. But yeah, get get in the mind frame. But then you get some people try and break your bubble. Yeah, it's like, like da, 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 da. yeah. What is your you are really after this part? Like that's not cool. Mm -hmm. But it, I think as actors, you just need to be hypersensitive in a good way. In a good not way. like hypersensitive. Like, oh my god, like you just said this or that. But to just be aware of the world yeah. and use it as inspiration. And so all those times that you had an argument or you've seen a massive argument in the subway, mm. then there's a really cool thing that I ended up telling actors to do. And I remember a, a teacher uh, from the Lecoq School in Paris told me about it. And I was like, oh, oh my God, this is so good. That if you come across someone, and I, I, I would say try this, right? Try, try this out. Okay. If you see someone who's really interesting, mm. think to yourself, and this is real life, think to yourself, that is an actor. It's not a person, they are acting like that. So that's an actor putting on that character. What are they doing that makes me believe them so much? Mm. You know, and then you start to break it down, like the physicality of the way they're moving, the way they talk, something really, even if it's someone really drunk or whatever, maybe there's mm. something they, they do, the way they slur their words or their look or the way they touch their face. And then you're going, whoa, I'm gonna try that out next time. Mm. Or I'm gonna save that for later. Do you do you take bits from people? Yes, yeah. like and use yeah. them for creating your characters when you know. I yeah, a hundred. I would say I would let it influence. I wouldn't be like I want to replicate it. I'd be like I'll let it influence. So there's one picture that I seen ages and ages ago, which is really beautiful and absolutely horrific, and it's just in, it's in my head where a guy is ended up. And it's crazy, it's in the metro, so metro paper. Mm -hmm. So, and you're thinking, oh my God, we're just surrounded by this, like awful, awful pictures. But it's such a strong picture of this guy who had lost his child. I think it was somewhere, it was definitely in the Middle East anyway. Mm -hmm. And he'd lost his child and he, he was almost holding on to himself. And behind him, his wife was hugging him from behind. Mm -hmm. So, and I thought, oh my God, that's so powerful. Normally it's the other way about, whatever, but you have someone there and it's such a strong image of, this man who's breaking down and his wife is there as the pillar to keep him up. I said, like, that's so beautiful. Mm. And I'm like, if there's ever a time where I can explore that and use that powerful image, then yeah, I would use it and explore it. Yeah. Or a time when I was 17 in Glasgow and I was queuing up to go to the Barrowlands, which is like a kind of music hall that a lot of uh, bands go to, you know, when they visit Glasgow. Yeah. It's such an amazing atmosphere. Um, but that area is really rough. Okay. <laughs> and I remember one guy, he was having an argument with someone outside a pub. And these are rough guys. I mean, these are, these are rough places. And these are hard men, these classic yeah. Glasgow hard men. Um, he was having a conversation with his girlfriend and this guy was shouting at him, whatever. And it's the most casual violence I've ever seen. And he ended up looking at him. And then he was just, he started the conversation again. And then again, he looked at him and then gave his pain over to his girlfriend or partner, still having a conversation. And then boom, headbutted him. And then took, took, the, <laughs> took the pint glass off and start, like continued the conversation. As if nothing like, happened. <laughs> oh my God. And that guy fell over a car and all this. And that same time, that guy was so casual and violent and, it was scary. I was yeah. like, oh my God, but you can to totally take everything from life. Yeah, just observe. Be observe and take it. And oh, there was a great one I seen in the, I know this is probably the last one, but this, this is the power of it. You, there was someone on the underground, a couple having an argument and it was so good. It was so good. So they were having an argument um, 
but you could tell that they loved each other so much. Yeah. And in scenes, you might only get about 40 seconds or a minute of a scene. So how can you convey that you still love this other character, mm. but at the same time have a meaningful disagreement and an argument? So you love them and you hate them at the same time. And this guy was having an argument with his, his wife. And you could tell by the physicality that, you know, whatever it was, it was big. But at the same time, she ended up taking off his glasses, still having a discussion with him, and then taking his scarf and then cleaning his glasses. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe you. No, 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 no. And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I had my headphones on, so I didn't even know what they're saying. And then she ended up putting it back in his head. And then he tapped her leg to be like, thanks. And that's everything. They're still, they're still going at each other, but that sure is the love, sure. yeah. Totally, you know? So it's about using those, nice. using life, using life. Yeah, using life. I love that, love that. Okay, we have like two more fun questions and then I will let you go. Uh, your favorite Last Kingdom scene to film? What has been your favorite so far? Um, I think there was a big battle week with Arnis and myself. Uh, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't know what shot they were using on the on the lens. We didn't know what how big the lens was or how tight it was, and we thought it was quite tight. So we ended up doing this kind of battle sequence. And sometimes you have to just swing your sword about, and it looks as if you're fighting, and that will be like cutaways that they might use in the edit room, or whatever. Mm. We ended up when they were. We ended up doing all our stunt moves, and they were like, "Just keep it going, keep it running." So then we started improvising our sword routines with other fight, uh, under uh, stunt guys, or people who just had swords and spears in general. <laughs> and, uh, we're being really safe with it and all that, but we didn't realize that they were filming on a wide shot because no one told <laughs> So we were just swinging our swords around and no one, and it just looked ridiculous. <laughs> and we were fighting no one. We were fighting basically like, <laughs> Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then uh, we ended up uh, moving towards the extras and uh, the extra stunt guys that were there. And they didn't really know what was happening either. So then we just had a massive battle and <laughs> we were just killing like so many people. We were like, man, we just killed like 50 people. This is insane. And no one, people no, were just all over like dying, <laughs> not even attacking us back to be like, ah. Oh, oh my god, this is insane. <laughs> but it was so funny after it, we were like, oh my god, that was Watch so it back. Funny. That was so funny. Luckily, they had loads of cameras, so we were mm. went like, oh my god, we just wasted a shot. So thank god for that. But What um, season was that? Uh, three. Okay. It was like when uh, Alfred attacks and he ends okay. up okay. Uh, charging in with his horses. Yeah. It was so, un oh man, it was so fun. Yeah. So on. Oh, I, can, I can imagine it just must be fun in general, you know, just a fun set to be on. Uh, who's the biggest prankster on set? Probably Alex, then Millie, then Arnis. Okay. Okay. Um, Ewan as well, but Ewan's quite quiet. He's the mysterious one. Okay. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it's between Alex and Millie for sure. When okay. they go against each other, I'm not involved. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, actors Juice. So, um, yeah, you, yeah you, you call coffee Actors Juice. How many coffees do you consume in one day on set, do you think? I think uh, maybe two two or three, maybe. Okay. I, I, yeah, but sometimes, like, uh, it just depends. Like, in the mornings, definitely a double shot. Mm -hmm. And then if we need to a little pick up, then I'll do another one. That the acting just is a double shot, a double mm -hmm. or a triple I've done before. Triple. Oof. That would I would do this. I would literally be jittery if I had a, a triple shot of coffee. Sometimes Presser. it's quite good. Sometimes it's quite good though. Yeah. Like hence like I, I remember for that scene that we're doing the plague scene and I had mm -hmm. to be a bit out of it. Um mm -hmm. they worked and I had the coffee rush and actually I did have the jitters. I was like, mm -hmm. oh this is really this is great. Again, it goes back to all. Oh, yeah, you use I, it. I'm, yeah. yeah, nervous, I'm everything. This is great. Yeah, cool. yeah. You're Scottish, but you play an Irishman. How does that work? How, how was that process? Was there something, you know, because the accents are quite 
quite similar, but I suppose there's certain inflections and certain things you have to adapt. So yeah, how was that? I would say the south of Ireland's a lot different to like Glasgow, but Belfast, the Irish, like uh, Northern Irish accent is quite similar to Glasgow to a certain okay. degree. Um, but yeah, like I've got mates who are Irish, so I just wanted to make sure that they don't slag me off basically. Mm. So I worked mm. really, really hard. I was like, no way am I going to let them like be yeah. like, oh my God, you absolutely tarnished that accent. Yeah. Uh, so I just worked really, really hard and that's it. But I, I love doing accents. I think they're really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, if you could break the ice with anyone past or present, who would it be and why? Oh my God. Well, it's kind of like that a dinner party question, isn't it? When you have like five people, who would you uh, invite for dinner? Yes. Yeah. Well, yes, <laughs> yeah. it is. It's just... Well, well, I mean, if like, if, well, probably Jesus. Jesus. Ah, okay, about... you're not the first person to say that. I've had one other, one other, Lauren Lal from Outlander. She said Jesus as well. Yeah. 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 Totally. Like it has to be someone like really iconic, yeah. or Napoleon, or you know, or maybe someone who's got a really good secret that we didn't know. Ooh. Like, oh my God, tell us yes. more. Tell, tell us about that. That would be interesting. I need to think great. about it. But yeah, you know, Jesus seems pretty cool. Yeah. Jesus is a good one. And then he can always like make the water wine. Uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. There oh, we go. Oh, oh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'll handle it. Top, top me up. Top me up, big man. <laughs> <laughs> top me up. Top me. We could go all night. We could go all night. Um, <laughs> awesome. Well, that's that's it, really. Thank you so much for your time and for being so open oh. and and honest and everything. That was absolutely oh. fantastic. All the best with everything, and hopefully, I keep in touch with her. Yes, definitely, fast. definitely. Have an awesome afternoon. I see. Right, you too. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more inspirational videos just like this, then don't forget to subscribe, which you can do by clicking right over here. Also leave us a comment in the section below and tell us who you guys would like us to break the ice with next.